Commission. And so I had my students uh, meet with a Truth and Reconciliation Commissioner from Liberia, Peace Museum experts, uh, you know, diaspora Liberians who are in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, also survivors of civil war, a gentleman whose own son was abducted to become uh, a child soldier tragically and went around, he collected a number of stories and published books about this. Uh, so we, we really engaged with the community, spent a long time just to try to understand that context and seeing ourselves as stakeholders too, not like we're gonna use technology for outreach, but say how do we relate to this through our own histories, our own biographies. And so what the system does is it uses uh, 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 users' actions to reveal multimedia content, the video, photographs, uh, text, and an AI system I wrote called Grio that simultaneously coordinates themes, narrative structure, and uh, media assets by finding analogies between them. And so what we did was find uh, a series of information through our experiences, talking to people, we coded it here at uh, three different levels, a visual level, uh, at the level of the kind of frame that it interacts with, and then stakeholder groups, different kind of theme, activist themes. Uh, and so we entered all this information in a form that could be manipulated computationally. Don't have to read this, but uh, it's translated into uh, a format that our, that our system could use. And then behind that, it structures uh, a, a narrative differently each time you interact with it. So what I'll do is I'll show you just a little wow. bit of the way that the, that the system works. And so the text is a bit hard to read on, on the projector. Here it says a silent moment for the loss. And so what you do before I start it is you have a series of different figures here. When you start it, you just hear a bit of ocean sound. You click on one of the figures, and what that does is pick a stakeholder group, like a woman or child. You know, but that stakeholder group could mean woman survivor, could mean woman combatant. So we're not choosing everything. We're just choosing one aspect of it. That will pick a series of clips that will appear within the fabric and then from those clips, you can click on just one of them. Then the next clip will be, will be uh, similar to the one you just picked. So if you click on something about a woman that deals with activism, then the one that comes after that will deal with activism. Then the next one might be a child that deals with activism. So it's a way that we're using AI not just to generate a, a story, but rather to improv improvisationally make sure that there's thematic links uh, between it. So I'll just, I'll just play a little bit of it so you can see what, what it looks like. So here you're seeing all the other related stakeholder groups and also kind of lost people that might be related to that group. Early I thought about being angry. That first part of my life was angry with the perpetrators, which meant these ex-child soldiers. When I started working with them, I realized that these young people are as much victim as I am. terrible people died every day especially children and I don't think I've ever seen people live in such abject poverty as I saw in the camps I get 
stop it just just for right now. But you know, like I should also say that you know, it's a bit artificial showing it here. This says something like this is what the technology can do because the idea of the system was to say not what can we do for Liberia, but to say how can we root computation within the culture of Liberia. So that's so you can ground the computing practices within diverse cultural practices. And so. Uh, it's, a, it's a reverse perspective. We're not just saying how can we go there and culturally plunder for the sake of technology. Uh, and so that's a big difference here. And so these videos are collected by a colleague actually in, in Liberia driving around in a, in a truck you know, from uh, doc documentary film, uh, from archival footage. So, uh, so there's, a, there's a close personal connection to a lot of the footage too. And so I'll wrap up here uh, before moving on to uh, uh, Malia, and so we'll just say that the conclusion is just that computing can be used for subjective expression and social change, right? It's not just a kind of objective uh, medium. And so in the kind of work we do, we think about imagination. Imagination is a kind of artful thought, interactive narrative, poetry, gaming, is a space for self-expression and self-imagination, computational identity systems. Imagination is categorization and more robust, more powerful forms of category, categorization that learns from black experience, learns from the experience of the, the marginalized or the survivors uh, and the dignity of people who have uh, uh, struggled for social change. Uh, and our projects are just a few modest steps towards those, uh, towards those ends. Anyway, thank you.